<laughs> oh. Ah. It's good to be back. It's been a while since we've had a chance to meet like this. I hope you're doing well, me personally. Lost a couple pounds if you haven't noticed. <sighs> New setup. Feels nice. Now let's talk about some jank. Furyu is a Japanese publisher responsible for some of the most charming budget RPGs on the market. One of those was a Vita nightmare game called Caligula, which was later remade into Caligula Overdose. I covered it in the early years of the channel, and I wasn't huge on it. The video is pretty old though, and while I think it'd be annoyingly self-deprecating to tell you not to watch it, don't feel like you have to either. Wait, what do you mean it's one of my most viewed videos? Are you serious? Oh man. After having three years to reflect on my time with it, I've come to the conclusion that it's a neat game with good ideas, bad execution, and no real identity. It had potential though, and Fudu clearly realized this, hence the existence of Caligula 2. I've done this song and dance far too many times, been burnt far too often on quirked up niche games with no sauce. Oh no, I've slipped and inserted all this Drakengard footage and I can't seem to remove move it either, ooh. All that to say, it's a lot harder to justify blind optimism these days. But I always go into games like this with an open mind. So what did I think of Caligula 2? Gamers, I finally see the light. Furyu is jank Kino Core sold AF. This is what I've been waiting for. We move! It is high. Oh, this is what we're doing now? This hackneyed butchering of a K-Bash bit? You know, I haven't had a good night's sleep in, what, weeks? Months? There's no purpose anymore, all the days blend together. I'm so exhausted. Just, just play the clip. So why has this game been feeding my brain goblin serotonin while the first game fed them melatonin? Well, because I like this one. Duh. This is one of those rare sequels where it feels like player feedback was genuinely taken into consideration. Most of my gripes of the original have been addressed. Not all, there were some steps back, but most. The full potential of the formula might still be held back by the limited budget, but it's certainly not held back by a lack of soul this time. What's step one in injecting soul into your teenage life sim JRPG, you ask? Make it goth. Instantly better. Do you feel that? 2021, the year of my goth transformation! <laughs> Ooh. All right, well, it seems like the only difference is that I wear black hoodies now, but I promise you, this is a big change. Feel revitalized. New year, new me. Okay, well, some things are harder to change than others. Look, I'm gonna level with you. I know what my average viewer retention is, and I read my comments. Let's get that low-hanging fruit of criticism out of the way early, hmm? Number one. The visuals are bad. Holy shit, bro. I didn't know you had functional eyes. Please, tell me more in the comments. Yeah, the game does not look good. Even worse if you're playing on Switch, but I... Don't care. It reminds me of a Dreamcast game, Jank 3D, compensated with a strong art direction. If this is a deal breaker for you, then okay, bye? Try not to misunderstand. I'm not saying the game is above criticism because I like it, but I just can't help but find the growing trend of blasting small studios for their graphical fidelity to be somewhat disingenuous. It's the equivalent of making fun of a finger painting. Sure, it doesn't look too great, but they tried. I don't know, you can critique away about it if you'd like, but that discussion, frankly, bores the hell out of me. So yeah, graphics bad, game good. Oh my god, we've done it. For the first time in YouTube history, we've successfully ensured that the comment section won't be annoying. Gin bless. <clears throat> um, anyway, what were we talking about? I think it was about goth people.
Yeah, that sounds about right. In Caligula 2, a new virtual doll named Regret has trapped people who listen to her songs in a virtual paradise called Redo. Here, they can relive an ideal version of their high school days in a world devoid of their regrets, traumas, and memories. You are one of those people living out a peaceful existence until being awoken to the truth of Redo by the virtual doll X. Wait, hold on. I'm not bald enough to pronounce that correctly. Uh, take it away, Zaya. Keep Thanks, Zaya. In a surprising twist, she claims to be the daughter of Mew, the antagonist of the first game and the virtual doll that ran Mobius. Huh. I guess that makes her a MILF now. Ow! No. We're above this kind of shit. God, okay, fine, sorry. Wait, did I just slap myself? So begins your quest to gather allies for a new go home club, help each of them process their traumas, and band together to defeat regret and escape redo. A similar formula to the original, yes, but execution is where this really shines. This game, dude, it just made my soul smile and my heart burst into a million butterflies. Caligula 2's dev team was Historia, the same one that fixed Caligula 1 into Overdose. Not being held back by the restraints of a remake this time around, it allowed them to inject some life into Caligula's dry formula. Caligula 1, stack of saltine crackers. That's so all you dry. get. Caligula 2, same stack, now with a beverage of your choice. fucking good. One of the ways they filled the metaphorical cup was by creating a fun cast of characters that play off each other well. They do this immediately with Keep, who is the polar opposite of, hmm, I honestly can't even remember the name of the bland scrumblina navigator from the first game. Anyway, she doesn't understand humans, and she has this air of arrogant self-importance that leads to a fun character arc. With the player being silent, she eagerly fills the role of protagonist and has entertaining interactions with the cast. She's rude and dismissive of their feelings in the beginning, but you can see her development grow parallel to the rest of them. It's simple and wonderfully effective. More on the characters later, though. The gameplay hasn't changed too much, but they were clever enough to design it to feel like and get this, a real video game. It started slow, removing the run button from Overdose did not leave the best first impression, but comes together once you have a full party to mess around with. The party members bring as much flair into their battle styles as they do their dialogue. They also level up fast and are customizable in their roles, so you're encouraged to switch your party around often. But this is my video and I am allowed to have my mandates. Kiriko must be in your party at all times. What, you think you're too good for katana-wielding idol sh movement? You're not. Moving on. The combat didn't feel too much different, but solid balancing went a long way. There's a new focus on playing an auto mode to streamline the process and maintain a fast pace, which I really enjoyed, and the AI is smart enough to be left on their own most of the time. Unless you're in a boss battle, and then they have no idea what they're doing. Bosses are either too hard or complete jokes, but even that's fun because the game is super enjoyable to break in your favor. It's not all perfect, hell I'd wish party members were programmed to change targets when they kill an enemy they were set to attack, I get why they aren't, it'd probably skew the balance too much in your favor, but still. Besides that though, it just feels fun to play, and I'd sometimes zone out and just find myself grinding fights without realizing it. Which is made so much better with a little thing called real dungeon design. And don't misunderstand, I'm not saying the dungeons are incredible, but when your comparison point is Caligula 1, Caligula 2 is looking more and more like it's got Nintendo polish. They all have a good visual aesthetic and are different enough with decent gimmicks and mechanics. There's a whole dungeon where the only way to progress is by hanging out with your friends. What other game lets you drink iced coffee in an oofy cafe at a school festival to strengthen your bonds with the besties to defeat the worsties? None! Why yes you can financially enable this trash every month. Patreon.com slash Dr. Cullen PhD. Now maybe you don't like coffee and you don't understand what's so special about Caligula 2. In many ways, it's nothing more than a solid RPG made on a tight budget, but the heart and soul elevates it so much. 
For every boring stretch of gameplay where the dungeons overstayed their welcome, the characters kept me going. Hearing their banter, seeing their developing combat styles, and witnessing how they come to terms with themselves in their character episodes. It's brilliant. That last one, though, is worth its own special mention, because it's where the majority of the cast opens up to the player, as a follow-up to a game that, in my opinion, prioritized being edgy about heavy subject matter over trying to say something heartfelt, these being so wholesome really got to me. For example, and this is a spoiler for a character story, click to here to skip it. One of the character arcs probably has some of the best non-binary representation in a JRPG I've ever seen, and lots of my non-binary friends and followers who have played it agree. And if for whatever reason you still don't believe me that the team was trying to improve across the board, well, you gotta remember, Last time, they did that. I just wish they hadn't made the decision to lock a majority of the characters' backstories behind their bonding events. It would have been a better idea, in my opinion, to reveal them in dungeons and then flesh them out further in the bonding events. That way, it would have added to the dynamic of a group of trauma victims working to help each other heal and grow closer in the process. This is why characters like Kiriko, who has a whole dungeon dedicated to her, end up being some of the strongest of the bunch. I love all these characters, but some definitely got more time and development than others. But overall, the writing and dialogue are so strong, which they need to be when coming out of mouths that look like this, that I think I can forgive it some. Tie this together with some genuinely effective twists that I loved, and I think the story works wonderfully. As a game, Caligula 2 is like a 7 out of 10? Ooh, so smooth with that review score. Bet you didn't even realize you were watching a review, did you? The flaws are apparent. No one can deny that. Besides, it wouldn't be a Caligula game if there wasn't the occasional janky execution of some truly brilliant ideas. But this time, the jank adds to the charm instead of taking away from it. There's a sense of confidence here that the original game did not have, and it kept my attention. Caligula 2 is fascinating. This game is cool, flaws and all, and honestly, I think that's enough for me. I'd like to leave you on this note. There is an excellent interview with the producer of the first game that was translated by digilab.blog. For the sake of brevity, I'll paraphrase a quote that really stuck with me, but I implore you to read the full interview and I'll link it in the description. Takuya Yamanake talked about how rare it is to find media that feels like it was made entirely for him. Because of that, he wants to make games that can do that for other people. I respect that and it feels like he and his team finally achieved that aspiration with Caligula 2. This has serious potential to be a certain someone's favorite game. Not everyone, obviously, because it's razor focused to appeal to a specific niche of people. And that's the beauty of games like this. Yeah, crowd pleasing AAA experiences will always exist and have a space in the industry. It's why they sell as much as they do. But when you're the specific kind of person a game like the Caligula Effect 2 is honing in on, it's bound to resonate with you infinitely more, flaws and all. And hey, maybe this isn't for you. But maybe it is. Who can say? Hey, thanks for watching the video. As always, we gotta give out them thanks. Thank you to NIS America for the review code, Supreme Zerker for editing the script as always, Xanderak for making the thumbnail, and last but certainly not least, Mibi, aka Kazuhiro Abo, for composing the new official credit slash main theme for the channel that you're hearing right now. The guy's responsible for some of my favorite songs on both the Travis Strikes Again and No More Heroes 3 soundtracks, so this was really cool. So yeah, check all three of them out. And of course comes the Patreon shoutout. For those of you who do not know, the channel is supported via Patreon. If you like what I do here and want to support the channel, get your name in the credits of each video, and possibly get up to three days early access on videos, then check out the Patreon page linked in the description below. This month's Metal Royal Slimes are Alex Austin, Autumn Jennings, Courtney Littleton, Enora Van, Ferion's Nipples, Happy Emmons, Hornkerling, I Frozen Ace, Jeremy DeForest, Moon Watcher, Pinhead, Nathan, Pyre, Sniggs, and Wayne is Boss. 
Thank you all again for watching and sticking to the very end. Stay safe out there, gamers. Bye-bye.